What's going on? What's going on? Happy Mamba Monday. I am Jamar John Johnson, and this is the first 2020 edition of my Walk and Talk series. Today is especially dedicated to rest in peace, Kobe, Bean Bryant, and Gigi Bryant, and all of the other passengers and the pilots on that fatal helicopter crash. I, t I gotta tell you what, yesterday I was on a 15 mile hike. It turned into a 30 mile hike before the day was over because I was so inspired by what transpired. It was, it was a complete tragedy. Kobe Bryant, as a father, as a entrepreneur, was really taking his life to the next level. There's a really awesome presentation with him speaking uh, on, on panel at a convention from last year. Video has over a million views already. It'll probably hit two or three million views. It was the last great interview that he gave. And I've watched it already once, but I'm watching it again and taking so many notes because there's so much to learn from a man such as Kobe Bean Bryant. So I want to, I got a couple things, you know, my, my, my walk and talks usually consist of three, three things, right? I try to have three topics that I just speak to you, stream of consciousness about them um, from a heartfelt place, from a, from a, you know, from a real place. And so I want to just thank you all for just tuning in here uh, as I grow my, my presence online, both my YouTube channel as well as my Facebook and Instagram, all of these platforms are really incredible. They allow us the opportunity, they afford us the opportunity to connect with people that we would have never met otherwise. And so let's really take advantage of it for positivity, um, for creativity and for, and for prosperity. So I got a couple notes. I'm gonna pull open my, pull open my phone and just check these notes out and then give you guys my take on them. So yeah, I walked further than I've ever walked before in my life in one day. Um, in terms in recognition of the loss that we had to the world. He was a humanitarian. He was doing some amazing things for women's basketball uh, as an artist, as a writer. There's so many lessons that we can learn. So I'm going to open up my note and take a look at Special Edition Mamba Monday. So let's first let's talk about the Mamba mentality. You know, the Mamba mentality was one of Understanding that to achieve greatness, you have to first see yourself how you would like to be seen. Meaning you have to believe in yourself more than anyone else can and will. That enables you to do great things. And, and Kobe was definitely the epitome of that. Kobe, you know, I remember when he was a rookie and he was playing the Utah Jazz in the playoffs. And he shot five air balls in a row. But he didn't stop shooting. He kept shooting because he believed in himself. Now he learned that he wasn't in the right shape to do what he thought he was capable of doing, but then he, that never happened to him again. And that's the one thing about, we're all gonna make mistakes as human beings, but when you make those mistakes, do you learn from those mistakes? Do you get up? Do you avoid making them again? Can you learn from the mistakes of others? That's what mentorship, being a mentee or a protege is all about. And so he learned a very, very valuable lesson. So the Mamba mentality was one of believing that you could do the unthinkable. And so I thank Kobe from the bottom of my heart for instilling that belief. You know, I, I was a basketball player growing up and basketball really changed my life. I actually have a tattoo of a basketball on my, on my arm. It was my first ever tattoo. I'll show it to you guys right here if you can see it. Got it when I was 19 because basketball literally saved my life. It gave me purpose. That purpose made me want to do the right thing, made me want to stay off the streets, made me want to excel in school and be a leader and mentor my other classmates. Had the opportunity of becoming, being voted the most valuable player by my teammates my senior year and I was not the most skilled player. So basketball allowed me to excel. It allowed me, it put me in position to where I was able to earn an academic scholarship because it gave me that level of focus. So I'll always have a connection to Kobe because of, he's basically a year older than me. So I got to see someone go right from high school. I went right into the military and he went into the NBA and had a massive impact on the world. 
Think about it, in China there's a billion people. Basketball is their national pastime. They literally have basketball courts all throughout the country and Kobe was their hero. Now let's talk about mental health and mental toughness because obviously a component of the Mamba mentality is having a strong mind. A strong mind is the foundation to having a strong body and that's the basis of all of your wealth because if you cannot produce, your most valuable asset is never anything of a, of a physical, material thing. Your most valuable asset is your body, is your mind. That's the foundation of wealth. And so if you don't have that strong, if you don't have that resolved, everything that you have in life that is of a material capacity can be taken away from you. And so that's what Mamba mentality means to me in terms of keeping your mental health strong. You know, there's, mental health is going to be a continuing theme of 2020. You know, here in America, 22 veterans commit suicide each and every single day. And that's because their mental health is severely compromised. We can, we can be a part of changing that. We've got to give people the tools. I remember, uh, you know, me suffering from PTSD from my time, both as a child and in the military. I remember learning about cognitive behavioral therapy. That's just one of many treatments. But see, there's another thing missing. There's a gut brain access connection that when your diet's off, when, you're, when your body's out of whack because you're eating the wrong things, it severely hampers your ability to communicate because our gut is responsible for, for, for allowing us to create serotonin, which allows us to be in full control of our, of our emotions at all times. You see, when you, when you, have, a dis, when you, have, a, when you have an imbalance in your gut axis, your gut brain axis, your judgment's off. You become irrational, you become chaotic. I mean, the studies have been done, the science is there. People suffer from all sorts of neurological disorders, ADHD, Alzheimer's, all of that stems from our guts. So we've got to take some action to help remedy the issue. And, and nutrition is important, yes, but nutrition alone is not going to do it. Not unless you can recondition the microbiome in your body to get it to change what it craves. To get it to change what it craves from, from fast food to whole whole grains whole whole natural foods vegetables but even there lies some issues there's a really good book called the plant paradox and in that book dr gundry who was a heart surgeon and was 70 pounds heavier than he was now he was doing all the right things but for some reason he couldn't lose the weight he found out that he had something, that there was something in plants called lectins. Lectins were around before humans were on this earth and they protected the plants from all of the insects and the animals that liked to eat them so that they didn't overeat and make one extinct. So we have to understand that while vegetables are good for us, they also contain lectins and some of the lectins tear up our intestinal tract. They break the walls and the lining. So, I highly recommend that you check out the book, The Plant Paradox, and start to investigate and through process of elimination, clean up your nutrition, but also help repair the gut-brain axis. And listen, there are supplements out there that can aid in that process, but I want you to take a holistic approach, right? Supplements alone are not going to be the answer to anything. But if you're interested in those, reach out to me and I'll definitely have some private conversations with you um, about those things. Last but not least, after we leave mental health, let's talk about relentless drive. You see, with the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter and all of the other passengers, the biggest thing that it reminds me, the biggest thing that it reminds me of is the fact that our life on this planet is, is short. It's short and it can be sweet if we live every, every moment like it's our last. If with all of our heart, we pour into stuff that we love. If with our lives, we feel like it is purpose driven, it will be fulfilling, no matter the outcome. If you, if you met every goal, there would, be no, there would be no peaks because there would be no valleys. 
It is important for us to, to reach moments of crisis and learn how to cope with them in this human body as we are just spiritual beings living a human existence. Now that's my belief. Now whether you believe in God, the universe, or something greater than yourself, if you're an entrepreneur, the only way you can succeed is by taking an action with faith that it'll one day benefit you. Because if you take no action, then you reap no results. And if you take no risk, then there is no rewards. And so Kobe taught me Time and time again, with all of his efforts, with his mindset, with his Mamba mentality, that the world is actually yours. Forever, how long or short you are able to hold it, grasp a hold of it, take control of it. Be all that you can be. Without actually joining the Army, because I was in the Marine Corps, hoorah! And the Navy, U.S. Navy. Shout out to all of those that serve this amazing country. Shout out to all of those that serve people all around the world. We can make a difference each and every single day. In a couple of weeks, on February 6th, I'm going to be at the United